Hey everybody, welcome back to Showplay's Corpse Party Chapter 5. Last time, stuff happened, Yuka got caught. And now we're doing this. The girl in the red dress, huh? I think I may have seen her. Her ghost, anyway. When I was with Seiko, one of the dark classrooms, she was crouched down on the ground and staring right at us. I saw her too, and the shadows when Yuka and I were walking through the hall earlier. It's like she's keeping an eye on us. We also found an old newspaper article in the nurse's office about the heavenly host kidnapping and murder case. There were photos of the four victims, and she was one of them. There's no doubt in my mind that ghost girl we've both seen is definitely Sachiko. But how's that possible? According to what we just saw, Sachiko wasn't killed. She survived. And if that's the case, shouldn't she have grown up into a proper adult by now? She'd have to look older than us, at the very least. Staying behind in a place like this, in child form, with the other victims, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense, does it? Yeah, that part bothers me too. I'm guessing that shortly after the incident, through some unrelated accident or something, Sachiko lost her life as well. If we can somehow meet up with her spirit, maybe we can learn more about what happened. More than what was reported, at the very least. And then we can use that information to get out of this school. If it's the key to getting everybody out of here safely. Oh, he did mention that. Take my chances with this school's curse, or whatever the hell it is. Once we find Yuka, what say we look for Sachiko as well? Okay. Oh, I am worried. I haven't heard Yuka's voice at all since before you found me. Yeah, we need to find some means of getting back to the other building. What the hell? This one feels completely different from any of the others. God, it's a big one. School can't possibly. Naomi, are you alright? Hang on to me. Uh, okay. Don't let go. I won't. It just keeps going. Naomi! Naomi! It's a ceiling beam! Satoshi! He's bleeding. Satoshi? Satoshi, speak to me! Are you okay? Uh, no! Satoshi! No! Please don't kill me! Don't kill me, please! No! Shinozaki! Shinozaki, snap out of it! Oh yeah, that's where we left him. Kinda forgot. Shinozaki, are you alright? I'll take that as a yes. Uh, it's okay. Everything's okay, okay? Come on, Shinozaki, everything's fine. You're safe. For, like, a second? What the? That's what happened to me. What was it like? What did you see? 
I saw the true identity of the, the murderer. Huh? That's why the doll wasn't enough. Repentance from the killer. We had the wrong person. Wait, are you telling me? You were actually there? Like, you saw the scene of the murders? That's exactly what I'm saying. I was seeing everything through Yuki's eyes. I was bound and then... I was killed. You little piece of... It's not her fault. I'm the one who wanted to know. And the murderer was a little girl. You remember the newspaper article Suzumoto showed us? Her photo was in it, along with her name. It's the girl in the red dress, Sachiko Shinozaki. She was listed as one of the victims, but believe me, she's no victim. Uh... No, that can't be right. That's impossible. For a little girl to do something like that? How could she abduct other children her own age? Keep them prisoner, no less. I could believe it if it were that monster with the hammer. He seems fully capable of kidnapping and tying up little kids any day of the week. Especially Sunday. He was just an accomplice. And the children were killed by Sachiko. The man with the hammer was in the corner of the room, quaking in fear. I was right, they were scared Yoshikazu noises. You can't be serious. I have no idea why you would have helped Sachiko in the first place, though. We have to tell the others, Mochida and Miss Yui. Yeah, I guess. Even Naho wasn't able to find out the whole truth. She's been in there longer than any of us. If we don't hurry up and tell them, they'll be dead before they ever find out. If Sachiko catches them unaware, it could all be over. We have to go back. Yuki, please. Take us back into the closed spaces. I'll find a way to exercise you and all the other spirits trapped in Heavenly Host. I swear. All of them. I wouldn't recommend that. As a result of your interference, as well as the interference of your friends, the spaces are in a state of critical flux right now. If I were to take you back, even if I kept this clarity of mind the whole time, I doubt I'd ever be able to bring you home again. But if we don't go back, everyone's going to die. Shinuma, let's go. Please? Oh, for our friends. Come on, for Mochida. No. I'm sorry, but no. I don't want to set one foot in that hellhole ever again. You shouldn't either. We'd have to get out of our minds to go, go back there. We'd die for sure. Why? Why do you always have to be like that? That's what I hate about you. You don't care about anyone's feelings but your own, and you're so stubborn once you've set your mind on something. You honestly saying you're fine as long as you get through this alive? But don't you dare try to psychoanalyze me. We'll die and I don't want to die. That clear enough for you? Fine, do whatever the hell you want. It was stupid of me to even bother asking you. I'll go by myself. I can't believe you. Do you really not care about rescuing your friends? You're a delinquent, a coward. Everyone's going to die and you don't even care. 
don't care about everyone either. The only person you care about is Satoshi. You drop the act. It's gotten pretty old. Always mochi to this, mochi to that. I hope two of you are happy together. But before you go, at least try to read the writing on the wall. I have no idea what you're talking about. Tell you I love you. Uh, what? You're so oblivious. You've been watching Satoshi so closely, you never even noticed how much I care about you. It, it was pretty obvious, Ayumi. It was, like, super obvious. I mean, this has been a weird situation and all, but when we got separated from him, and you and I wound up alone together, I have to admit, it made me kind of happy. I thought maybe it would be a good chance to catch your eye and strut away from his. The whole time, all you could think about was him. You probably kept wishing it was Satoshi by your side instead of me. Well, Satoshi's not here. I am. So look at me. From the bottom of my heart, I... Stop it. Just stop it, please. How could you think any of that is true? It, um... I thought it was true. It sounded pretty true. But she is not the only one I'm worried about. I'm worried about Miss Yui, too. And only those two, because those are the only two names that I ever said. Remember just a few short hours ago, when everyone was cleaning up after the culture festival and complaining about it the whole time? Isn't that a precious memory to you? I want us to have experiences like that again. There's still so much I want to share with all of you. That's why I'm going back, because if I don't, we can never be together again, and the thought of that absolutely mortifies me. So please, Yuki, take me back. I don't have care if I have to go it alone, just please hurry, before it's too late. You're certain? Yes. Please. As you wish. Just for the record, Kishinuma. I'm absolutely terrified of this. But I'm still doing it. Do whatever the hell you want. I'm going home. We're collecting to buy a bouquet of flowers for our dear friend Suzume. Who will be leaving us for a new school after the festival? 300 yen per person. They're. they're all gone now. What does it even matter? It'll just be like my 10th grade year all over again. Go back to being a lone wolf. No biggie. Pretty much used to it, honestly. Oh, hey, Yoshiki. What are you up to? S Satoshi? <laughs> what kind of face is that? Been skipping meals again or something? Kishinuma, you're late. <laughs> but you seem in good spirits again today, at least. Susumoto. But you're dead. I can't open that door. And most of the desks are gone. Just kind of a scary blob. You don't care about everyone either. The only person you care about is Satoshi. What the hell was I thinking? Why would I have said that to her? That wasn't it at all. It's not even remotely what I wanted to say. I just wanted to protect her. What the hell is wrong with me? I'll probably never see her again. I take it back. 
I take it all back, please. God, let me take it back. It's a charm that I found on the internet. If we do it right, then all of us will be together forever. Or we'll always be friends anyway. That's the gist of it. Show yourself. Get out here, ghost girl. Please, I'm begging you. How could I be such a jerk? Please, I don't... I don't want to lose them. Shinosaki, Satoshi, Miss Yui, everybody. Sorry, but please... Take me, too. I was about to run from this, the way I always do. But when I first started hanging out with those losers, I felt like I was... reborn. So please. Shinozaki is scared of everything, but even she's giving it this her best shot. I'm not about to let her upstage me. I swear, we're going to wrench the repentance from Sachiko with our bare hands if we have to. Put all the rest of you at peace once and for all. Seems reasonable. Ooh, it's red in here. It is so red. I kinda miss the soothing blue. Entry into the Empire of Japan's secret intelligence base is strictly forbidden. Expulsion to all trespassers. Okay. What the? I got a text? But I've had no service this whole time. Actually, I still have no service. Shinozaki, where are you? I'm here too. Let's meet up. Kishinuma, you came through after all. Let's see if he gets my reply. Message sent. Message received. I'm worried about you being all by yourself. <sighs> Jerk. I appreciate it. I was starting to feel kind of overwhelmed. Come quickly and send... I do feel a little better now. Actually, that was probably the first time I've ever responded to a text message from Kishinuma. <laughs> That's kind of mean of Yumi. But he's not coming, is he? Maybe I should try texting him again. What are you doing? Where are you? Sent. I probably just realized it's supposed to have no service here, that's all. But if he's in the school, I'm sure I'll run into him eventually. Is this... 1A? Like, the meetup room? Let me just check for sparkles. Yeah. <coughs> Yuka! <coughs> Big brother! Wah! <coughs> now then, Yuka. Going to kill you. Like it or not, it's going to happen. <laughs> Quite an unexpected change from the doldrums of junior high, no? The realization that your existence will soon come to an end. <laughs> Can you believe it? When you woke up this morning, did you say to yourself, I'm going to die today? People who die in traffic accidents don't ever know what's coming. They wake up, get out of bed, wash their faces, and all the while, the thought that they're going to die that day never even enters their minds. Well, take heart. This situation isn't all that different when you think about it. Death is not an unexpected occurrence. 
It's not random chance. Death is always lurking in the shadows, every minute of every day. It's because people forget that, that death takes them by surprise. It's the very height of folly. However, therein lies the appeal. You see, Yuka, I've witnessed a great many in my life. I've touched them. Felt them. The final moments of life from a wide variety of living beings. Every one of them always struggled to live to the bitter end, never giving up the fight. But I've watched those final sparks of life burn down to nothing. I've seen them go out. And it's in that last, desperate moment that the fire of one's life shines most beautifully. Humans, you see, have brains that allow them to consider various possibilities and communicate those possibilities with other humans. But they rarely ever use their brains to truly explore the concepts of life and death. Uh, we have, like, tons of movies about life and death. I mean, seriously, just watch a movie ever. They forego ruminating on the meaning of life and the laws of the universe, instead opting to use their cognitive abilities for pointless wastes of time. They stop focusing their energy on giving some semblance of purpose to their pitiful existences and simply indulge themselves in earthly pleasures. Isn't that what you're doing? Some are even foolish enough to kill themselves. It's like everyone in this world is a gibbering idiot. But you see, I'm fascinated by it. When a person becomes aware of his or her own impending demise, or better yet, is in the process of dying, what sort of fireworks will that last spark of life become? Quite simply, the answer to that is what I crave. Kurosaki's death was absolutely exquisite. I believe he may even have understood me in the end. He must have, to have shown me such a breathtaking display. <laughs> ah, Kizami, you make me smile. Yuka, you're my little sister. You wouldn't be so unsisterly as to feign no reaction, I trust. After what I'm about to do to you, you will show me the dance of death I so desire, will you not? If it's agonizing, you're welcome to scream bloody murder. No need to hold back on my account. <laughs> <laughs> Yuka, your screams, they amuse me. <laughs> That's it. That's perfect. Give me more. I think I'll end this episode here, so I'll see you next time if you're not too scared of me by then. <laughs>